All right, one of the best and most exciting soft plastic bluegill imitation baits is the Depths Bowl Flat. Now, we sell gazillions of these. It is one of the most popular baits in Japan. It's becoming one of the most popular baits here in the US as well. It's just a very natural, beautiful, you know, bluegill panfish profile bait. It's available in four different sizes, a three inch, a three eight, a four eight, and a five eight. So today we are gonna show you exactly how we're rigging each size, how we're fishing each size, so that you guys can have some confidence and some fun throwing the Depths Bull Flat. Let's do it. Welcome to the Hookup Tackle. The Hookup Tackle is the world's largest showcase of Mega Bass products, featuring baits and colors not found at any other dealer. The Hookup also offers a wide display of OSP, Evergreen, Depths, Lucky Craft, Jackal, and many more. The Hook of Tackle is owned and operated by family, is staffed by guides and verified tackle nerds who love helping anglers elevate their craft. If you're in the Phoenix area, we'd love to have you stop by our showroom and check out the wonderful world of Mega Bass and the Hookup for yourself. If you shop online, there are almost 10,000 SKUs of Mega Bass products alone with hundreds of other companies and new products being added daily. So next time you're looking for that hard to find bait, that color your fish have never seen before, or maybe you just want to elevate your game, look at thehookuptackle.com. All right, welcome back, my friends. I am Ben with The Hookup Tackle, AKA The Tackle Otaku on Instagram, being joined by my buddy, Jeffrey the King. We are The Hookup Tackle USA. Today, we are talking riggings for the Depths Bowl Flat. This is gonna be part of our series where we break down exactly how to rig each of these baits. We're gonna go through the four sizes. So the Bull Flat, if you're not familiar with the Bull Flat, you should become familiar if you fish any bass species that are feeding on bluegill, perch, panfish, you know, anything in that variety. The Bull Flat is one of the most natural looking and natural profiled baits in that genre so that you guys can catch a lot of fish when they're feeding on them. There are four different sizes. There is a tiny little three inch guy. There is a 3.8 inch dude that's amazing on the free rig. There's a 4.8 inch size that's kind of the in-between kind of free rig, Texas rig, fish it by itself size. And then there is the biggest dude, a big 5.8 inch size that really, I mean, you could use it in Texas rig and a free rig, but really it's designed to be fished more like a swim bait. So we're gonna break down the line right now so you guys know exactly how we're rigging these things. So Jeff, this is becoming one of your favorite pond baits. You were chucking yeah. it in Florida the whole time <laughs> and jacking them. Yeah. What do you think about the bull flat? I think the bull flat's rad, dude. I mean, ever since we had Ken to come in, I think before that I was like, eh whatever but then he broke it down he showed us how it actually fishes in the tank because before i thought it was a, a free rig bait right and i'm like oh that's that's cool but then he pulled out a swim bait hook and i'm like excuse me and then i was seeing it glide and, and do all this stuff i'm like okay that's pretty rad right and so yeah. i really like that 4.8 i need to start fishing that 5.8 more but so the 4.8 is your favorite size yeah so i far. think that's probably the most versatile size the five point is my favorite size just because it's, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it's like fishing a swim bait. Yeah. But the 3.8 inch is probably our best seller yeah. because I think a lot of guys don't know exactly how to rig it. If you guys haven't seen the Kenta video where Kenta came into the shop and broke down the bull flat and how he, you know, uses it and how all the depths guys use it, definitely check that out. Jeff, throw a link right here. A little lower, right there. Boom. Throw a link right there, check it out. He really breaks down his approach with it, but hopefully this will shed some insight to you guys on what we're doing and how we're using them. So let's start small and work up to those bigger ones that we just talked about. Sound good? Yep. Okay. So the smallest one in the lineup is the three inch. Okay. Now this is probably the one that I use the least. It's a really cool little bait but really the three inch size, it's small enough to where really it's it's more of a drop shot bait than anything else, okay? So this is a tiny little three inch dude. Now you could also use it on a jig trailer. A lot of times in Japan, they will use it on a smaller jig to create more of a bluegill profile jig. So that could definitely be something if your fish are feeding on small bluegill, small tilapia, something more in this profile. It could work great there. But really, day in and day out, this is a great drop shot type size. Just because it's small and very subtle and it's gonna give that little bluegillish profile to those fish. Now, 
The bull flat is designed to be fished. You'll notice that there is a round side on one and there is a flat side on the other. So rig it however you want. They're designed to be fished round side down, right? So that as they fall, that roundness kind of gives it just a little bit of a rock. It's a very subtle little rock while that little wedge tail kicks and it's a very subtle kick like when you look at it at first when i saw it, i'm like oh man that tail's gonna do all this cool <laughs> shit yeah, right no but it doesn't it's <laughs> it's almost at first when you pull it's like is it moving but if you pay very close attention it's a very subtle little vibration under the water and it's just incredibly lifelike right so it mimics what a bluegill or panfish is actually doing because bluegill aren't they're not doing this shit right they, if you look at them they're just real subtly moving right and then the fish as it's falling they're seeing that wide profile right so as they're looking up they're seeing that blue yellowish profile they they smoke it so here we go three inch size 19 out of 20 times if i'm going to throw this size i'm doing it on a drop shot and i'm going to drop shot it when i see a bunch of tiny little bluegill like in the spring you know or whatever season but when i see a bunch of those small little bluegill out there i know they're feeding on it I'll use it on a drop shot. For the drop shot on this guy, I like a little bit wider hook. So this is the hook. One of these hooks ends up working great. Either the decoy big bite or the Ryugi talisman. Either of those work better. I prefer this hook over something like a shot rig worm or anything like that, just because it's got that wider gap to it, right? This is a pretty thick piece of plastic. So having that little thicker hook works great. A uh, size one or size two, depending on the hook, size one ends up being my go-to, but any of these will work for the drop shot. Now, if you want to finesse free rig this thing, it, it could certainly work great on a lighter weight, lighter line free rig. Either of these hooks will work well. The Zapu Bellows hook in a size one or the Owner J hook in a size one ot. Okay, so either of those will fit it well. The Zappos tend to run a little bit bigger than like the Owner or the Ryugi do. Okay, so that's why as we talk through this, you'll see that we're probably one size less on the, on the bellows hook and one size greater on things like the Owner. But you can see that if you were gonna free rig this guy, that size one fits it perfect. And that's pretty much it. I mean, pretty straightforward. You want that hook to kind of be, you know, anywhere from the middle to like the lower third of the bait, okay? You just want to make sure because it's a thick plastic, you just want to make sure there's enough of a gap there, right? So that it can, it can hook them well. But there you go, real simple, three inch, done. Now many other things you can do with it because it's so small. <laughs> so there you go, all right. Moving on to the 3.8 inch size. Now this is the size that we sell the most because I think it's the least intimidating, right? So it's not a, it's not a very big size. It's kind of like the perfect snack size, bite size, bluegill size, right? Uh, I said size like nine million times, <laughs> but you can see it's, it's big enough to where there's a presence because of its width, but it's small enough still to where it's not daunting and it's a very easy size to just add to the free rig like jeff was talking about this is kind of how we fished all the sizes before you know kenta taught us better but the 3.8 is still probably the free rig size so if you guys are looking for just a great free rig bait and it's an amazing free rig bait any of these flatter style baits on the free rig will have a really nice drift and fall to them which just makes the bait's so good on a free rig, right? Because bass are so used to baits just going in a straight line that when you get a bait that can kind of drift and slide and glide where it wants, then as you work it back to the, the bait and to the weight, you're getting the bait to kind of come at different angles or you know over things. It's not just a straight line, it looks much more lifelike. So on the 3.8, if you're gonna free rig it, and again, you can Texas rig it too. So if you put a little light Texas rig in front of it and just have a little finessey Texas rig, that works great as well. These are the hooks that end up working the best for this size, okay? The Zapu Bellows hook in a two-aught, the Ryugi Infini in a two-aught, and the Owner J hook in a three-aught, okay? You could maybe get away with a two-aught in the J hook and a three-aught in the Infini. Those would work fine as well, but those are the hooks that we use specifically on this guy. 
happen to have one rigged up with the free rig. So there is a two-aught Zappu bellows. And you can see that on that 3.8, that that fits that size perfectly. You can see there it's right kind of again in that middle. You want that hook to be kind of anywhere from the middle to that lower third quadrant in there. So there's still enough plastic for it to move. The actual body, right, this piece doesn't have much movement to it. The actual body is more or less designed to give it that kind of rock and glide. You just want to have it far enough away to where it's not affecting that movement. So there you go. Just an amazing way to present a nice natural bluegill profile to the fish on a free rig, that 3.8 inch size. Boom. Now, if you want to throw that 3.8 inch size because the size matches, right? The profile is correct, but you can't throw a free rig or a text rig because you've got too much grass or it's too matted or you want that bait to stay up higher, you can throw it on its own on a weighted hook. The 4 aught decoy Maki Sasu weighted fits it perfect, okay? So this would be basically you're just gonna throw it on its own, kind of, you know, nothing else, just the hook, okay? And you can see if you Put this guy on there. It's the perfect size for that. So one of the cool things about the decoy weighted hook is these Maki Sasus, these weights can slide and adjust on there as well. So if you wanted to be more back weighted and have a different fall, you can do that. You can leave it in the front and have a little bit more of a glide. But this is a great way to present it just very naturally, very subtly, keep it high above the grass or in that really shallow water. It works great as well. Definitely still relatively finesse. This whole combo probably still only weighs maybe about three eighths of an ounce. So it's not gonna cast like incredibly well on really heavy cover or a really heavy rod, but it's a great way to present a small little bait to them. Okay, moving on to the real sizes now. Okay, the four eight and the five eight. So the four eight, this is Jeff's favorite size. And I think this is probably the most versatile size, right? It's not super huge, not super intimidating, but still a pretty good size snack, right? That's much bigger than most plastics are going to be. You know, it's bigger than like a beaver or something like that. This is the size bluegill they probably eat the most, I would say, right? So again, you can free rig this. You can give them a bigger presentation. It's a heavy piece of plastic. So the plastic alone now is going to be about half an ounce. So this is something that's going to have to go on casting gear. Right? You're not going to be able to like light line finesse free rig this thing with a spinning rod. So you could do you know a Texas rig or heavier free rig setup with your casting gear for sure, absolutely. And if you're going to do that, the five aught is the perfect size for that. So the Zapu bellows hook in a five aught Ryugi and Finney in a five aught owner J hook in a five aught. The five aught fits the 4.8 perfectly. So that's a great way to go. Now. The way we primarily fish it is on a swim bait style hook, okay? So six aught weighted beast hook, six aught Maki Sasu weighted, a five aught pierce weighted. Any of those will fit this guy really, really well. And I'll rig that up and show you guys here. Now, I prefer the owner or the decoy over the Ryugi, okay? Now, if you watch the Kenta video, he's gonna speak a lot about the Ryugi. I love the hook of the Ryugi. I think it hooks them amazingly well, but I'm not a huge fan of this spring. So if you go the Ryugi route, I would recommend just getting some owner CPS springs. It holds the plastic much better. This, this tighter style, whether it's the owner or the decoy, reduces a lot of tear. Do you find the same thing, Jeff? 100%, that spring is awful. Yeah, so the, this spring is great for rigging them. It goes in nice and easy, but I find that it's kind of one and done. Yeah. So you're gonna get one fish and it's gonna rip out. And you're, you're not gonna get any more life out of it, which, you know, I guess if you don't catch a lot of fish, it's, it's worth it, but it can get frustrating when, I mean, the way I catch fish, I'd need like five million <laughs> yeah, bags of, I was gonna of say. Yeah, but I love, I love the Ryugi hook. So if you go this way, you know, play with hooks. Again, you know, hooks are such a personal thing, but I love the hook. I would just do a different spring on it. But there you go. You can see it's rigged in exactly the right way. Now, when you rig this four aught or the five aught like this, the idea is 
is you want to kind of get it down right to the bottom and then you can certainly just kind of give it some slow crawls. I mean, play with the presentation. But the way they smoke this thing is to get it down there and you just kind of rip it, right? You kind of like stroke it a couple times to get this thing to really dart up and then flutter back down. It's a look that they're not seeing down there and it's drawing a trigger strike. And it really has this great darting motion and then a nice kind of glide slow fall down. So it's looking a lot probably like a wounded bluegill or something you know if you watch a bluegill when it struggles they kind of have that kind of you know kind of kick and then they kind of spiral down and they try to kick again they kind of spiral down it could also look like a crawdad right just kind of scurrying away but it's in the profile that they're used to seeing in a grassy lake or a place where they're feeding on perch or bluegill so there you go there's the 4.8 and then when you get to the 5.8 same thing okay you can certainly you know, fish this thing on a free rig, on a Texas rig, but the 5.8, this is, this is, this is big. That would be a big free rig. Right? So yeah, you're definitely <laughs> going to be using some casting gear because just the plastic alone, dude, you're going to, it's close to an ounce. <laughs> it's, it's an ounce of plastic, That's right? That's ridiculous. When these first, when I first started throwing these, I was throwing on a Tokyo rig. Mm. So before free rig, before I really like knew the free rig, I was throwing on a Tokyo rig because I like the look of it just off the bottom, mm. right? So this is also a great thing you could do on a Tokyo rig or a Jika rig or a jig rig or anything like that. They work great on there because they do give that nice little subtle kind of kick and that little bluegill movement to them. I think now the free rig is just so much more versatile because I can get that big glide out of them when I want the glide or I can keep it tight when I don't want it. So. If you're going to free rig, flip, Texas rig, anything like this with it, six aught or seven aught is what you're gonna want depending on the hook. So the bellows hook in six aught is one that I like. Also the jungle wide gap from owner in a seven aught is a really good one. So it just depends if you want more gap or less. Remember, it's heavy and it's pretty thick, right? So a bigger hook is you know, is gonna be important. Five aught's just not enough, so you're gonna need to go to six or seven, but either of those work great on that guy. Why don't we just rig one up? Let's do it, Jeff. So here's a six aught Zapu bellows hook. The reason I prefer the Zapu over like the Ryugi and Finny hook for the larger size, Griffin and I were actually just talking about this, it just has more collar. Right, so there's just more collar to the hook, so you it, it just sets and bites a little bit more plastic. When they're eating this big guy, they're usually a little larger caliber fish, so I'm not so concerned with like plowing through baits because I'm getting bites, I'm happy to lose a bait, but I don't want it to tear while I'm fishing or while I'm casting. So I like just that little bit more collar or neck, but there you can see that six aught, it's still, you know, relatively, tight and snug on there but there's plenty of bite plenty of gap once they once they eat it i find that that fits it perfect and again it's in that kind of half to third quadrant so you go if you're gonna free rig it or do something like that there's that or if you're gonna fish it the way it was designed to be fished we're gonna put it on some type of weighted swim bait hook so owner beast weighted in an a dot decoy makisasu weighted in an a dot or again if you want to go with the ryugi the weighted brutal or the pierce it's got they could do the seven knot fits it perfect okay again same thing this is an amazing hook but you got to change that stupid spring out i that spring is so frustrating <laughs> you're going to tear the front of the bait casting it because the spring just doesn't grip it tight enough it's too loose so love the hook Love everything about it. You will hook everyone that bites, but you got to change that spring to a CPS spring uh, from owner. Or if you just don't want to mess with it, you know, get one of these. Now, the weighted beast is also another cool way to do it. And, you know, it just gives it a different look, more of a swim bait retrieve than a, you know, kind of twitch and jerk retrieve. So here, let's, let's rig it up a couple different ways. All right, so here's on the seven knot. Ryugi, I just happened to grab this one just because, but it doesn't matter. Seven aught or eight aught works great. 
So there you have it, right? It's basically just a weighted swim bait in essence. And you're gonna fish it the same way the four point. You're gonna let it sink down to the bottom, right? You're gonna let it lay down there and you're gonna give it some pretty good hard jerks or rips. Think of it almost like a fluke. And you want this thing just to kind of move and dart. And the idea behind going with the big one is that if everybody else in your lake is throwing small baits, right? You're giving them something they're not seeing. And I guarantee you, your fish are not seeing a lot of these. And this is so easy for a fish to get in their mouth. It seems big to us, but a three pounder, I mean, this thing is gone, right? So, you know, you're not looking to try to catch the one pounders. You're looking to catch those three plus pounders. This is a great way to do it. If you want to rig it more like a swim bait, you want to cast and wind and give them a totally unique view, something that they're not seeing, they're seeing a lot of paddle tail type baits, right? Uh, Magdraft freestyles or, you know, hollow bellies or something like that. Then you could do the same thing on a bladed hook. And you can give them something very, very subtle that's still going to have that really nice swimming motion to it. And the ADOT weighted beast fits it perfect. Okay, there you go. And then you can just fish it very slowly along the bottom. You can still rip it, you can still move it, but you can have it at more of a steady pace for when they're chasing down bluegills, chasing down tilapias, that kind of stuff in more of that profile. All right, well, there you go, guys. There is the rigging that we are using on one of our favorite bluegill profile baits, the Depths Bull Flat. If you have any questions on anything we covered, drop it down below in the comment section. We'll definitely get to it. Jeff will leave links to everything that we talked about in the description. Just use this as a guide, use it as a starting point. And then please, if you guys find something different, a different rigging or a different way you guys are using it, share it with us. We just want to create a community of great information so we can all jack a bunch of big ones. So I hope you guys enjoy the bull flat. I hope the rigging tips helped. Until next time, thank you guys for the business and the support. We will see you soon. Peace out.